Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 47. Tonight we're going to cover Eridanus, the river. And Eridanus is located in the South Celestial Hemisphere. So tonight's simulation necessitated a change of location. So we are simulating a view from French Guiana in South America. We have Stellarium set up for December the 25th, 2020 at about 9 p.m. Eridanus is best viewed from November to January, making it a wintertime constellation. And if you if you live in the northern celestial, I mean the northern hemisphere of Earth, then uh, part of Eridanus is visible, the, the northern part of it. Um, it does cover a lot of a lot of sky in terms of declination. It's very long and thin and covers about 60 degrees in declination. So to see the southern parts of it, you really do have to observe it from a more southern location, um, an equatorial location or even farther south. So how do we find Eridanus the river? So we're looking south and we're from an equatorial location. So the, uh, the stars we're used to seeing in the south are higher up. So let's start there. Let's look up really high and find Orion. Okay. And you can see Orion is over here. Here's Betelgeuse and Bellatrix and Rigel and Safe. And then the three belt stars, Alnitak, Alnilum, and Mintaka. Now, Eridanus begins about here at Rigel. Even though Rigel is in Orion, Eridanus begins there. And if you're in a southern location where you can see the bright star Akernar, that's pretty much where Eridanus the river ends. So it, Eridanus goes all the way from Rigel all the way down here to Akernar. And Akernar is also known as um, Alpha Eridani and is a 0 0.45 magnitude star, making Akernar one of the sky's brightest stars. See, Rigel is 0 0.15 and Akernar is 0 0.45. So they're very similar in brightness. So let's take a look at the constellation lines. And as I said, here's the bottom of Orion. Here's Rigel. And Eridanus, the river, pretty much begins there. And the river flows all the way around here, around Fornax, around Calum, and down past Horologium, and next to Phoenix, and finally ends down here at Akernar. Now, if you're, if you're observing from the northern hemisphere, your view will end about here, okay? Um, you're able to see Lepus from the Northern Hemisphere and Canis Major and maybe a little bit of Fornax, but your, your view of Eridanus is, ends about here, so you get about half of it. So venturing to an equatorial region, you would then be able to see all the way down to Akernar which would have to be really cool. And let's see the, uh, the part of sky that Eridanus covers. Now, the way Stellarium has it labeled here, it has Eridanus, the label here, inside the Fornax border, but Eridanus is actually this area. All of this area, the river here, and then extending all the way down this stair-step pattern, all the way down to Akernar. So as I said, that's how I remember where Eridanus is. It, the river starts at Rigel and flows all the way down here to Akernar. Now, since I live in uh, North America, I never, I've never seen Akernar. I've never been far enough south to see that. So it's on my bucket list of things to see. So maybe someday. 
Okay, let's let's turn off let's turn off the star names, make it a little bit more realistic. Give a, a view of of Eridanus. Again, here's Rigel, and it flows over like this, and all the way down to Akernar. So um, I have some double stars here within uh, Eridanus. Um, the first one I have listed is Theta Eridani. So let's search for that. And uh, its name is Akamar, or Theta Eridani, and it is listed here at magnitude 3.2. And through the finder scope, it doesn't appear to split. So let's have a look through an eyepiece. Um, through a 19 millimeter, it doesn't split. And through a 9, it's not splitting here. Let's see if we can split it manually. Yeah, it takes a little bit more power, but um, Theta Eridani does split pretty nicely with high power. So if you have a... If you have a 9mm or maybe a 6mm eyepiece, even though the simulation here couldn't split it with a 9, you should actually be able to split it with a 9mm or a shorter focal length eyepiece. So let's see where this is in the sky. So here's... So here's Rigel up here, and here's Akernar. So Theta Eridani is right here, and let's see, here's Lepus. So I'm going to venture a guess that Theta Eridani is probably not visible from, from North America. So a venture further south, I mean, you might be able to get to it from southern Florida, uh, but it'd probably be better to, uh, to try to view it from... Uh, a location further south. So I have another one listed, um, Omicron 2 Eridani. So let's let's search for that. And this is a fourth magnitude star. And it, it's in the part of, of Eridanus that that kind of curves around after after it leaves Rigel. So it this looks like it would be visible from uh, from a slightly more northern location. Let's see how this one splits through the finder scope. Looks like a really nice view. You've got this other star here near it. You've got some fainter stars here around it. And through an eyepiece here, simulation, it doesn't look like it splits. So let's try this one manually. It doesn't split here. It's listed as Omicron 1. I wonder if one of these stars is Omicron 2. Nope. 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 So apparently, apparently the... The companion to Omicron 1, Eridani, is really, really close to it. So not sure you'd be able to split that with a backyard telescope, but it might be worth a try since it is visible from the northern hemisphere. Okay, let's see if we can get Eridanus back in view here. Here's Rigel and here's Ak Akronar. So we're in this region of sky here. All of this is Eridanus the river. Okay, 32 Eridani is a double, another double. And again, this one looks like it's in the northern part of the river. Uh, this one is listed at magnitude 6, uh, 344 light years from Earth. So let's see how this one splits. This one looks like it splits nicely. 
another thing that's interesting, if you use Stellarium to look up double stars, it kind of gives you an idea of which ones you might actually be able to split with your telescope. Okay, I really liked that one. That was a nice one. So let's get our constellation back into view here. And here's Rigel here, and here's Akronar way down here. So I wonder if there are any deep sky objects in this long, narrow pathway here that the river takes. So far, everything's been, been more up in this area. Hmm. Uh, let's try let's try another double star uh, there's one uh, P Eridani uh, is magnitude 5.6 located 26 light years from Earth and this one is in the far southern reaches of the constellation in fact here's Akronar right here so let's see how well P. Eridani splits. Oh, this one splits nicely. So this would be a good one to go for if you are in a more southern location and you can get this far south in the constellation. Very nice. I like that one too. Okay, let's see where we are again. Here's Akronar and here's Rigel. So those are my two signposts to find Eridanus. So let's let's look for some deep sky objects. And since we're down here in the southern, uh, looking at some of the southern sky, let's make it dark. Oh boy, let's see if we can find our way around now. Here's Orion. So here's Rigel here, and all the way down here is Akronar, or Alpha Eridani. And Alpha Eridani is located 139 light years from Earth. So let's look for some deep sky objects now that we're at a dark location. Uh, the first one I have here is NGC 1535. By the way, there are no Messier objects in Eridanus. Um, NGC 1535 is a planetary nebula of magnitude 9.6. So let's take a look at this. It's 7,500 light years from Earth. And let's see. Through the finder scope, it looks like yeah, it looks like Neptune. It looks like a very, very faint little smudge. So through an eyepiece, through a 13 millimeter Nagler, it's like a really nice little planetary nebula. We could use a little more power on that. Put a nine millimeter Delight eyepiece on it. That's a really nice, really nice planetary. It's named here Cleopatra's Eye. Very interesting. Probably not something I'll see in the near future, unfortunately. Maybe I will. Look, it's up in the northern part of the constellation. I may have to give that a try. I don't think I've ever searched for that before. Okay, let's look for another deep sky object in Eridanus. Uh, NGC 1909. And this one's really close to Rigel, so this looks doable. This one's named the Witch Head Nebula. And it is magnitude 8. So it looks like the best view of this is going to be through the finder scope or through binoculars. Like a nice, really big area of nebulosity here. <clears throat> Let's put some low power on it. Yeah, an eyepiece doesn't do much for it. It really does look better 
through binoculars or through the finder scope. So a reflection nebula. It's probably picking up its energy and light from nearby Rigel and these other nearby stars, which is why they're called reflection nebula. Well, those are going to be doable. Those are close enough to the to Rigel that we may be able to get to them. I have one more deep sky object in Eridanus, and that is NGC 1269. That one's a little farther south, so that one may not be doable. So let's try it with Stellarium here. It's a galaxy called the Snow Collar Galaxy. And through the finder, it looks like it's visible. It doesn't have a distance listed here. Uh, but judging by its size on the sky, 30 million light years, 50 million light years perhaps. Looks like a really nice one. Through the low power 24 millimeter panoptic eyepiece, you really get a nice view of it. Okay, let's have one more look at the constellation's position in the sky. Let's turn on the mythical figures. There we go. And you can see. Um, Eridanus, the river here, basically begins at Rigel and flows this way all the way around Fornax and Calum and Horologium and Phoenix and finally ends down here at Akronar. So a very long constellation that covers a lot of declination on the sky. Okay, this concludes my tour of Eridanus the River. Good night and good seeing.